facing trials, tribulations, unknown things are happening around us and look like friends are becoming enemies and enemies are being doubled. It appears that you want to ask God, what did I do that I'm in this situation? You are hoping, trusting, and believing. And look like all you're praying, you're hoping, you're believing, you're touching and agreeing, and still didn't work out. But today God sends us a word that will remind us that He is still on the throne. And that with Him nothing shall be impossible. So even as you are holding that hand now, whisper a word of prayer to God for them. Before we pray for yourself, whisper a word of prayer for them that God will come in and do on their behalf. I'll pray for you. You pray for me. And watch God.
Gospel of St. Mark, the 8th chapter, verse number 22. Mark chapter 8, verse number 22. And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring him a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw all. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly. May God bless the reading of his word and the church said amen. amen. This morning I'd like to talk to you about the second touch. The second touch. When you read this passage of scripture is it possible that Jesus' power was somewhat lacking and failure is obvious because at the first church the man did not see clearly is this an indication of incompleteness and perhaps in some instances our Lord and Savior is incompetent or is this a passage of scripture that allowed the unbeliever to take root and believe that God's Son, Jesus Christ, is less than perfect. In other Bible passages, you read that the Master only used one touch. In fact, throughout the whole Bible, this is the only place where Jesus touched anyone more than once in order for them to receive their healing. Matthew, the 8th chapter, and the 3rd verse, when the lepers came to him saying, Master, we believe that if you touch us, we can be healed. One touch and they were healed. In Matthew 8 and 15, when he went to see Peter's mother-in-law, she had a high fever. He simply touched her hind and the fever disappeared. In Matthew 9 and 29, two blind men came to him crying, Master, son of David, have mercy on us. One touch and those brothers were healed. In Luke, the seventh chapter, in the 14th verse, Jesus ran into a funeral where the only son of a widow woman was dead. One touch, and the dead boy got up. In Luke 22 and 51, Peter, so eager to defend Jesus, pulled out his sword and cut the servant Malachi's ear off. Jesus reached down, picked the ear up, put it back on, and the man was made whole instantly. In Matthew 9 and 20, there was a woman who started a whole movement. She said, I'm tired of being sick. She had lost all of her money. All of her friends were gone. Everyone knew her as the woman that was unclean. But she said, if I can only touch the hill, if it's gone, I believe I'll be made whole. One touch at the master's hill and this woman was made whole in fact she started a movement because in Matthew 14 and 36 the Bible says as multitudes of individuals sought to touch the clothes of Jesus everyone that touched him they were made whole so then why is it that this blind man needed more than one touch the Bible lets us know that this blind man was brought to Jesus for healing by his friends. His cure is only related by this evangelist, Brother Mark. Here is a blind man brought to Christ by his friends and his friends desire that the master will heal him. They knew from previous experiences and from what they had heard from others, that one touch from Jesus 
would make the man whole. Every now and then, you and I will be praying for our brothers and sisters. Many of you now are praying for your sons and daughters. You've got parents that may be elderly, sick, and things are not going well, and you are lifting them in prayer, and you're wondering what in the world is going on that God has not healed them. Take a closer look at this blind man. The blind man apparently did not come on his own. He did not come by his own accord. But we see here where his friends are telling him, if you go to Jesus, Jesus is able to heal you. And like some of us reluctantly say, well, if you think it'll help, well, so you'll leave me alone. Well, so you will say that I am gone. I am going to allow you to take me to see Jesus. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Don't you dare stop praying for those reluctant believers. All right, all right. Don't you dare stop praying for your sons and daughters who are too young to understand that one day soon they're going to need the Lord like they've never needed him before. Don't you dare stop praying for your child that think they got the world in their hands and this is their world. Sooner or later, the Lord will allow them to open their eyes and they're going to realize, if I ever needed the Lord, I'm going to need him now. When this man came to Jesus, he came with his own reasons. His friends had a method that they wanted to do. The healing. You and I do not have the authority to instruct Jesus how to give us the miracle we are seeking. We oftentimes want to tell the Lord how to do it. We oftentimes want to tell him when to do it. We oftentimes want to tell him to do it in front of everybody so people can see that I am a walking miracle. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. You cannot tell Jesus how to do his job. There are people that keep getting in trouble because they try to tell Jesus how to do his job. Let me give you a couple of examples. Y'all remember the two sisters, Martha and Mary, said a word to Jesus that our brother Lazarus is sick. Come and heal him. Found in John the 11th chapter. And when Jesus did not come immediately, but he waited until Lazarus was dead, Hard and stinking. Yeah. Then he shows up. Yeah. Martha and Mary meet him and said, uh, Master, if you had done like we told you, came four days ago, if you had answered our email or responded to our text or would have answered my request on Facebook, this would not have happened. Look at somebody and tell them, you cannot hurry God. See, they thought that because their brother was dead, it was over. But Jesus had a purpose and a reason for taking his time. And when he got there, he said, show me where you buried him. Yet too late, the sister said, he's stinking by now. He said, just show me where you buried him. He looked at them, he said, do you know who I am? I am the light and the resurrection. Though a brother be dead, in me, yet shall he live. Yes, right. Then Jesus turned and looked at those smart sisters, tears rolling down his eyes, yes. and he turned toward the tomb of Lazarus and he said, Lazarus, yes. get up. Well, yes. Lazarus on the other side of glory. Lazarus on the other side of the universe. Lazarus in the new Jerusalem. Walking the streets of gold, looking at the mansion that was going to be here. Heard somebody calling his name. And he said, hush! Somebody calling my name. Oh, I know Lazarus was quite upset. If I make it to heaven, don't y'all call me back. Hello, somebody. Been too hard getting there the first time. I wish I had a witness here. And I'm making the glory. Don't be talking about Lord sending back. Let me go. Can I get a witness here? Yeah. I'm going to be like the songwriter said. One of these mornings yeah. won't be very long. Yeah. 
you be looking for me, and I'll be going on home. I'm going up to God. Y'all don't hear me here. Yeah. And I'm going to walk around heaven. Somebody help me shout all day. But when Lazarus came back from the grave, the sisters understood this truly is the Son of God, and he's able to do what he desires. Tell your name again. You cannot tell God how to give you your miracle. The only thing God requires of you and I is that we thank him in advance. Anybody want to praise God for your miracle? Oh, don't act like you don't need one. Anybody want to thank the Father Lord for your miracle? The miracle in your son, in your daughter, in your healing, in your finances, in your church. Somebody shout glory! Yes. Paul was another one. Brother preachers and brother deacons that wanted to tell Jesus what to do. In 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, he complains, Lord, this is my third time coming to you about this problem. The master answered him, Paul, good news and bad news. Which one do you want? He said the bad news. He said the bad news is I'm not going to remove this affliction that I put on you. And Paul said, well, where can there be any good news? He said the good news is that my grace is sufficient for you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if God has not moved your affliction, his grace will carry you through. Anybody want to praise God right there? He's having his headache a long time. His grace. I've been broke a long time. Yeah, but you still got a roof over your head. Still have food on the table. You still look pretty sharp. Still sending your baby to college. Still doing all the things you want to do. Thank God for his grace. For those of you that don't know what grace means, it means the unmerited. Somebody up and shout, favor. Favor will make your enemy bless you. Favor will make the boss man give you the raise. When he told everybody, there won't be a raise this year. Favor will let them look way down on the list. And you're at the bottom of the list. But he'll raise you from the bottom and put you on top. Y'all not hearing me here. Favor will make the symptoms go away. And your body will be healed. Because somebody prayed for you. Favor. Anybody want to thank God for favor? Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, I feel something in here. Good God am I. Anybody else need favor other than me? Put your hand and say, Lord, I thank you for favor. See, favor will pay your bill. And you don't know how they got paid. Favor will make your enemy drop a love gift on you. Favor talking about you. Turn around and give you a job. Favor will open doors for your children. Even though they're not right, they're not saved, don't have the Holy Ghost, because you pray. Favor will open the door. Somebody said, thank God for favor. Anybody want to praise God then? Come on and shout glory. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are so blessed because I have favor. But well, how am I blessed because you got favor? You see, when God gives you favor, he don't give you just enough, but he gives you more. Now, God's not here for me here. Somebody say more than enough. So when I got favor and you are next to me, the favor on me will rub off on you. The favor in me will rub off over here. Just lean on your neighbor and say, hey neighbor, have some of my favor. Somebody say yeah. Oh, my, 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 my. Somebody shout glory. Come on again and shout glory. Grab 
knock your neighbor by the head. I'm, I'm trying to get you to see a point. Say, neighbor, no matter how hard it is, no matter how difficult it is, the God we serve will never leave us, will never abandon us. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Somebody said, neighbor, have some favor. Praise God! Oh, you're not doing it right. Somebody shot your own I'm trying to tell you about favor. My mother needs a new car. This was old with a lot of miles on it. But thank God it looked good. Over in the midnight hour last night. Brother Fabian, God spoke to me and said, Preacher, I'm finna give you a favor. And I said, What you talking about, Lord? He said, In a little while, you gonna get mother a car. Told me what kind to get, what color to get. It. I ain't got no money, so it's gonna have to be a miracle for God to work it out. And I woke up in my sleep. I said, Thank God for the miracle. Favor. Anybody want to shout favor? Anybody want to shout favor? Shout it again, favor. Come on and give God some praise. Come on and give God some praise. I know you're looking at me, but you don't understand. But in 1991, the folks gave me, Brother Fabian, a new Lincoln Town car. A few years later, some other folks gave me a brand new Navigator. A few days later, y'all don't hear me, somebody else gave me a Ford F-150. Because I got somebody said, Favor, shout again, Favor, Favor, God wants you to have favor. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, grab your favor, hold on to your favor, don't let go your favor, say, yeah. Somebody shout glory. Oh, my. I didn't mean to preach about favor this morning, but tell your neighbor, neighbor, the second touch will bring you favor. Sit down for a minute, let me... Get back on track here, but I felt that one. Somebody say it again, favor. favor. This time when you shout it, those of you waiting on a new home, don't worry about your jack of credit. Don't worry about the credit score. Don't worry about what the bank said. Somebody shout favor. Don't you say no feeling. Don't worry about what the x-ray said, what the MRI said, what the specialist said. There is a God up in glory. The woman with the issue of blood said, I never had surgery. The doctor never touched me. But one touch at the hem of his garment, and my body was made whole. Somebody shout favor. So here, we have the blind man. This blind man had a problem. He had issues. Because his friends brought him to Jesus. He did not come on his own accord. And when you don't go to God on your own accord, it requires a different kind of miracle. Oh, I'm in trouble now. It requires a different kind of anointing. You see, when you read the Bible, in Matthew 9 and 27, the Bible said there were two blind men that followed Jesus and they cried at the top of their voice, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. They were blind and they, and they couldn't see where they were going, but they followed the crowd and said, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. Here this blind man is. And he ain't saying a word. Just that. Not one word, not one whisper, not one anything, just that. You remember blind Bartimaeus. In Mark the 10th chapter, on the back side of Jericho, a blind man named Bartimaeus 
sent by the highway bed. Yes, yes. And when the crowd came by, he asked them, what's all the fuss? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth yes. is passing by. Yes. Somebody said, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Mary's little baby. Yes. Somebody shout, Jesus. Yes. Son of David. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Abraham's son. Jesus. Mighty rolls of Sharon. Jesus, my healer and deliverer. When they told Bartimaeus that it was Jesus, he started shouting, Jesus. Is there anybody need him this morning? Can you help me shout, Jesus? Anybody need to call him for Junior? Help me say, Jesus. Anybody need to call him for baby girl? Come on back. The third time, 
we got it right. Sometimes you got to go to Jesus over and over again until you get it right. And I get a witness here. He didn't answer you the first time. Tell your neighbor, go back. If he don't answer you the second time, tell him, go back. If he don't answer the third time, tell him, go back. Somebody say it. Yeah. the woman and the unjust judge. She went to the judge and he would not hear her. She followed him home. He would not hear her. She went to his job. He would not hear her. He went to his church. He still wouldn't hear her. Every time the judge turned around, that same little woman would say, Judge, it's me again. Avenge me on my adversary. One day, the judge looked over the courtroom, saw the little lady there, and said, I don't fear God. I don't fear man. But that little woman, it worried me to death. I'm going to give her what she asked for, so she will leave me alone. You got to go to God for your first time. Your second touch, your third touch, your fourth touch, as many touches as you need until you get healed, get delivered, or get set free. Somebody say yeah. Tell God yeah. Tell him yeah. Yes, Lord. Thank you. 